Motorcycles, like bears, come in three sizes, small, medium and large, right? Well, that used to be true in the adventure bike market, where you had your 3 and 400s, your 800s and your 1200s. Then, as these classes tend to do, the 1200s became 1250s and 1300s, the 800s became 900s and 950s, and the 3 and 400s stayed where they were. And that's a problem, because the jump from a 300 with 30 horsepower to a 900 with 100 horsepower is rather large. So is the jump in weight. It's hard to justify calling a 500 pound motorcycle mid-sized, especially when it's built for going off-road. But then, Yamaha broke the mold with the Tenere 700 which became, and still is, a sensation. And that's because it was smaller and lighter than the other mid-sized ADV bikes. And quite frankly, that's what customers wanted all along. Lighter, simpler, more off-road capable, and price right. And so last year, Aprilia joined Yamaha in this mini mid-sized category with their Touareg 660. And this year, at the Eichma Motorcycle Show, Honda and Suzuki introduced the Transalp 750 and the V-Strom 800DE on the same day. Now, to be clear, the V-Strom is heftier and has a larger engine than the others. And even though prices for these new bikes are not yet public, it's likely that the Honda and Suzuki will fall in a similar price bracket to the Tenere and the Touareg, a few thousand below the Triumph Tiger 900s and KTM 890 Adventure Rs. So, poof! We have a new category of motorcycles in terms of power and price. And even though the Tenere 700 is the only one I've ridden, I own one, I wanted to go over these four bike specs to see how they compare and what stands out about each one. So let's take a look. And as always, if you find this content valuable, please consider subscribing, liking the video and sharing it with someone who would find it interesting. Now spec sheet comparisons are dubious at best. Sometimes a motorcycle can be greater than the sum of its parts and hit just the right notes with riders. The 1999 Suzuki SV650 was such a bike and I believe the Tenere 700 is as well. However, we're working with limited information here and early adopters will be making decisions based on spec sheets for now. So we'll compare these four motorcycles on the basis of what we know about them. And the two we do know about are fairly comparable, with the Touareg being a bit more expensive but also a bit more capable than the Tenere on and off-road. So to start, these motorcycles all share the same engine architecture, running parallel twins with 270 degree crank pin offsets, which means they'll all sound good. Here's the Tenere. They are all chain driven, have 6 gears, are fuel injected, have dual front disc brakes and TFT color dashes with phone connectivity. The Tenere 700 was just upgraded with one for 2023. And as I said before, they are all likely to be priced within spitting distance of each other. The 2023 Tenere 700 costs 10,500 US MSRP and 13,500 Canadian. We don't have the 2023 pricing for the Touareg yet, but in 2022 it cost 12,000 US and 14,600 Canadian. So Yamaha really marked up the Canadian Tenere's charging 3,000 more in Canada while Aprilia charged only 2,600 more. Pricing for the Honda and Suzuki is rumored to fall somewhere in that range as well. In the engine department we see that we are living in the age of the 270 degree parallel twin with everybody and their sister producing these compact and simple engines. The Yamaha 689cc CP2 motor is legendary for being a torquey fun wheelie monster. The motor translated very well from the MT-07 to the Tenere and is quite flexible off-road. It produces about 74 horsepower and 50 pound-feet of torque. The Touareg 660's 659cc motor ups those power figures with 80 horsepower and 52 pound-feet and by all accounts is a bit more aggressive in its power delivery. The Transalp 755cc mill wins the horsepower war with an impressive 90 ponies and churns out 55 pound-feet of torque. The Suzuki V-Strom 800DE, with the biggest engine in the group at 776cc, twists hardest with 57.5 torques and is second in horsepower with 83. How the last two perform on the road and trail remains to be seen. One of the advantages of these motorcycles over the 900s is weight and three of them offer significant weight savings over the bigger bikes. The lightest is the Aprilia with a wet weight of 449 pounds with the Tenere and Transalp close at 452 and 459 pounds respectively. 
The V-Strom is actually heftier than the 900 level bikes with a wet weight of 507 pounds. It has the largest gas tank of the bunch, but that does not account for such a large discrepancy. Another wide discrepancy between these motorcycles is the suspension and ground clearance, and here again the Aprilia comes out on top with 240 millimeters or 9.45 inches of travel at both ends and 9.5 inches of ground clearance. Aprilia's suspension is also fully adjustable with spring preload and compression and rebound damping in the forks and shock. Surprisingly, the V-Strom has the second greatest amount of travel and third best ground clearance with 8.7 inches or 220 millimeters in each category. The V-Strom suspension is also fully adjustable, impressive spec for the class. The Tenere rocks 8.3 inches or 210 millimeters of front travel and 7.9 inches or 200 millimeters in the shock. The shock is fully adjustable and the forks have compression and rebound damping but no spring preload. The suspension works well for me at my weight of 175 pounds or 80 kilos. The Tenere's 9.4 inches of ground clearance matches the Touareg. Although the Honda Transalp is a will spec motorcycle, the suspension is its weak point with only 8 inches or 203 millimeters of travel in the front and 7.5 inches or 190 millimeters in the rear. Additionally, the forks and shock are only spring preload adjustable with no compression or rebound damping. Ground clearance is also the lowest among these bikes with 8.3 inches. It looks like Honda has built a motorcycle for touring on pavement and occasional forays onto gravel or dirt as long as it's not too gnarly. All of these machines offer an off-road friendly 21 inch front wheel and three of them combine that with an equally off-road friendly 18 inch rear. The V-Strom's rear wheel is 17 inches and its tires look the most pavement oriented. The Touareg is the only bike that offers tubeless rims and tires, while the other three make do with tubes. The Transalp has the lowest seat at 33.6 inches, the V-Strom is close behind at 33.7 and the Touareg right behind that with 33.85. The Tenere sits tallest with a 34.4 inch seat height, though Yamaha offers a factory lowering kit. I can attest to the Tenere seat being a bit of a plank. I haven't sat on the others, but from pictures, the V-Strom saddle looks the most inviting for both rider and passenger. The Tenere and Touareg win in the braking department with Brembo 3-way adjustable ABS systems, which can be turned off on the rear wheel or fully if the rider wants. The Honda and Suzuki allow the rider to turn off ABS on the rear wheel only. The Aprilia, Honda and Suzuki each offer rider modes and traction control with off-road modes. The Yamaha? Um, no. All offer a quick shifter, but only Suzuki gives it to you standard, and only the Aprilia gives you cruise control. It's not a surprise that the Tenere doesn't have this feature, as it's the only cable-operated throttle, but with both Honda and Suzuki being ride-by-wire, it's surprising that cruise wasn't included. Perhaps it will come on future up-spec models. At only 16 liters, the Tenere has the smallest tank, and I can report about 250 kilometers of range while riding aggressively. If I keep it at 90 km per hour or 55 miles per hour on the flat without the bags, 300 is achievable. The Honda is next with 16.9 liters and should get a bit further. Then comes the Aprilia with 18 liters and the Suzuki tops the list with 20, suggesting that it might be the most touring oriented bike of the bunch. It also offers an adjustable windscreen and looks the widest, giving the rider the best weather protection. Globally, Honda has the largest dealer network with Yamaha and Suzuki both having a good presence. Unless you live in Italy, Aprilia's dealerships might be the hardest to find if you need maintenance or repairs. Looks are subjective, but being a fan of the rally look, I like the Yamaha best with the Aprilia second only due to its headlight. The Honda and Suzuki are both good looking as well, but are definitely styled like adventure bikes, more interstate and less Morocco or Baja. And as far as reliability goes, all I can say is that the Tenere 700 has not as much as hiccuped in the three seasons I've been riding it, crashes and all. Both Honda and Suzuki have a stellar reputation for reliability and there's no reason to believe that the Transalp and V-Strom will change that. As for Aprilia, who knows? The brand has a bit of a spotty history, but that's no reason to assume that the Touareg will follow that trend. Still, these motorcycles may be used to ford rivers and Italian electrical systems and rivers, I don't know. Not casting shade, just sharing decades of experience. So what to make of all these bikes? If you want the sharpest weapon for the twisties and the trail, the Aprilia is your pick. It's surprising that an Italian bike can offer so much for such a reasonable price. It's definitely the most capable bike here. The only questions are around its dealer support and reliability. 
The Tenere should be the second most capable off-roader in this group and I can report that it's very well-mannered and easy to ride on the trails for a bike this size. Both the Transalp and the V-Strom seem to be primarily aimed at pavement touring and lighter off-roading. The Transalp is lighter but the V-Strom has better suspension and more ground clearance, so how they handle pavement and dirt remains to be seen. The V-Strom looks most like a big adventure tour for long distance and two up riding. The Transalp has the most horsepower and could turn out to be the zippiest on pavement. I for one am really glad to see some less expensive options coming to the adventure market. It's about time the manufacturers respond to what riders actually want. Tenray 700s have been flying out of dealerships so these new bikes should fill a void in the market and keep pricing competitive. Looking at them, I'd still pick the Tenere because I like going off-road and I like Yamaha's proven reliability. But most adventure riders don't off-road nearly as much as I do, so the Transalp and V-Strom may be more appropriate choices if the occasional gravel road is all they're planning to do. But how about you? Which one of these would be your choice? Or would you prefer something bigger or smaller? Please leave your thoughts in the comments and stay safe on your adventures. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding. We're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.